Hey everybody and thank you for joining us. My name is Justin Miller and I am here with Frank Durant. Frank, how you doing? Well. Frank, we have had quite a number of takes, but we're going to get this one right now, right? I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> so we are here to talk to you guys about video codecs. And by codec, what we mean is a compress decompress process to take video and get it from, well, basically A to B. Or uh, coming from a camera, a, the information gets compressed so it can be stored or streamed online. And then when it gets to the player, it gets decompressed by the player back into its original format. So there are a number of codecs out there available. We'll talk about the main ones and some up and coming ones. Um, the one most familiar for everybody, I think, is H.264, otherwise known on a commercial level as advanced video codec. Uh, what can you tell me about this codec? I can say it's our most widely adopted codec for sure in terms of playback capabilities and is also the most feature rich codec I would say for transcoding operations on Wowza Streaming Engine and on our other products. Right, and I'm sure most of our protocols because it's been around so long uh, have implemented it. Um, definitely it's used in um, compression for uh, DVDs, uh, Blu-rays, etc. But as it's been around for so long, other mm -hmm. codecs have come on, on the market and in fact H.264, as we said it was called, has been not replaced, but mm -hmm. it basically they created a new version, right, or updated codec uh, by the same people, um, H.265, known as HEVC, or High Efficiency Video Codec, and I do hate that name. It does sound like my heater. It sounds like, it sounds like <laughs> any appliance in my house. Everything's at high efficiency today. What makes it high efficiency? There's a lot of details around that, Justin, but it came more so as a natural progression of H.264 and was built to handle larger resolutions and Right, because it HDR needed to content. at the time, right? I mean, basically, when we first started out with uh, ABC, we were dealing with uh, 480p video, right? And then we mm -hmm. jumped into high definition or 1080p. Definitely yeah. a big difference. Yeah, so we when we're talking about this, it's not only better at compressing larger resolutions, but it's also had in mind uh, HDR content or wider color ranges that you do see displayed on modern displays today. Oh, okay. I did not know that. Now, that being said, uh, at the same time that HEVC came out, uh, there was also VP9. Can you tell me about VP9? Yeah. So one of the interesting differences between, um, we can tell, call these, these H.26X codecs and the other ones we've been talking about is is the idea of uh, royalties or patent encumbrance. So our H.26X um, codecs are all royalty and patent encumbered and sometimes limit adoption for browsers or playback devices. And when we look at VP8, VP9, and AV1, they aren't. So it makes an interesting right. appeal to, to player companies and content providers when they choose which one they're going to use. Right. VP9 is, say, implemented by, I believe, uh, Google, for example, in YouTube videos? Yeah, yeah, and they were the ones that spearheaded, I think, most of the development, and they purchased the company that initially uh, created VP9's predecessors. Okay. Now, that being said, there is a big new codec uh, currently uh, available right now, which came out about a year ago, and that's AV1. Is AV1, does that have any relationship to VP9? It does. I mean, it's now governed by what I believe is called the Alliance for Open Media, but its, it's idea and purpose is the same. Okay. And I believe it's uh, much more efficient in terms of compression? That's the idea, yeah. It's more of a next generation codec okay. when compared to VP9. And in terms of uh, its own competition, the one that's on the forefront right now as we talk about in H26X family, mm -hmm. um, there is uh, H266 or VVC, the uh, versatile video codec. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with it at all? Not as much as I am with AV1. I feel like I've heard a lot more buzz around that. The VVC buzz is certain, certainly coming around more but I can't speak to it as right. much as I can. And it sounds AV1. like a lot of that has to do with uh, what you're saying, the uh, AV1, VP9, these are royalty free. Mm -hmm. Hey, I think it's an interesting thing to look forward to. Um, with the 
lack of adoption in, with some playback devices with HEVC, yeah. questioning how widely it's going to be adopted for VVC. Right. And a big adoption has to do with not just these companies, right, mm -hmm. but uh, whether the hardware out there available can support it. That's correct. And it's also interesting when you look at like how content providers have to deal with these problems, which right. is really just they're trying to deliver high definition, large resolution content at you know a cost savings and their options for doing so currently require that they have to encode it multiple times in different formats to get it to all playback devices. Right. I think it's interesting because in the past it used to be all about broadcasters, you know, mm -hmm. and so you're dealing with a signal that has to go from A to B. Well, I guess in the same instance we are, but we're not talking about now uh, antennas. You know, we're talking about uh, OTT and IPTV, and because of that, we're dealing with different devices and considerations of bandwidth where we're dealing with people who are at home and hopefully have gigabit. I don't know what you have at your house. <laughs> I do. I'll pay for it. It's worth it. I have two kids. <laughs> and trust me, they're on YouTube all the time. Uh, versus, you know, also watching it on your phone. I mean, I admit, I was, I was happy when Netflix offered the ability for me to download the files directly to my phone for 30 days or whatever. Because mm -hmm. um, definitely streaming it when you only have a certain amount of bandwidth available, uh, you know, at driving home or watching it on the bus or something, it's tedious. For certain. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, thank you for joining us today. Um, thank you all for watching. And if you're interested in learning more about uh, Codex or other ways of live video streaming, please check out our website at www.wowza.com.